so over there to get. We're going to be. Uh, Um, testing one, two, but, but you're muted again. So she's, but it's because of this. Yeah. So we're not getting that, we're not getting that feed. So, testing one, two, testing one, two. Perfect. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to our SAU uh, uh, first meeting of the month. Uh, today is Thursday, May the 12th, 2022, and it is currently 6.04. Um, welcome to members of, or member of the public and uh, to my fellow board members. Uh, we're going to start off actually with a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A3, semicolon 2. Motion by Mr. Torres, seconded by Ms. Grund. Uh, we have no remote members this evening, so all in favor, roll call vote. Mr. Glover. Yes. O'Keefe, yes. Gauthier, yes. Conklin, yes. Bay, yes. White, yes. Therese, yes. Great. We are now in uh, non public.
on the agenda. We'll just wait for Tanya to come back. You definitely don't want to start without her. <laughs> Right. They were ready when you are. Oh, okay. All set? Yep. All right, perfect. Uh, so let's start our meeting. Let's go into our public comment period, one of two. And uh, again, just for the recording, we're going to go back into public session. We're going to go into the public comment period, one of two. If a member of the public would like to address the board, uh, more than welcome to come up to the desk. Just hit uh, the button to turn on the mic. Last call for public comment period. We're going to close it out. Let's go on to the consent agenda. Uh, so we're going to break it down one through nine. And uh, if someone wants something pulled, uh, we'll vote on everything first, and then we'll go back to the ones that we pulled. So number one. Number two. Number three. To pull this out. So we'll pull three, four, and five. Uh, number six, we got an advanced copy from Ms. Gouley Zimmerman about some corrections. I think we're on five. We're pulling four, five, and six, and I said some corrections. Is that correct? There was no agenda today. Yeah. I'm looking at the new one. That's three, four, five. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. Four, five, six. That's the old one. Thanks. Feel pretty sure, but you never know. Oops. What happens when you prepare before? Uh, Let's revise like today. Revise or say if it's. Thank you. We're going to pull four, five, and six. Number seven is where the corrections are. And uh, I think we all got a copy of that. I don't think we need to announce them. Did you provide those to Danae? So if we could just forward those over to Danae. There's just minor uh, uh, Scribner error type things uh, in that, Danae. Okay. Yeah, so let's just pull the minutes, and then we'll come back to it. So we're going to pull number seven. Number eight. Number nine. And num pull number nine. Okay. Yes. Great. So, yeah, uh, no worries. We'll um, let, let's just go back to the beginning, and I was thinking that it would be a lot faster. So, um, let's start off with uh, four, five, and six. Um, Ms. Facey, do you think we can respond to those real fast? That'd be awesome. Okay, so first transfer, that's a contractual obligation to Tom for professional development. So, great day. So we did a transfer from um, one, P, one PD class to another to meet the obligations of uh, someone's contract. How did we, what, what made, what, what's the contract obligation that we're... For professional fulfilling? development, okay. coursework. So they, they, do they need particular training or is there a class that they're taking or required to take or... Yep, and well they have, it's in their contract that they're allowed to, to do okay. the professional development. So it wasn't budgeted for, it wasn't appropriated. Okay. So we had savings in another area that we moved over to, to cover that. Isn't that larger than the normal amount that's um, allocated for each individual 
professional or is this administration level? It's admin. It's for graduate coursework. And we don't always, um, most of our um, administrators do have graduate coursework reimbursement in their contracts, but we don't always budget for every single administrator to take you know, the, the three courses they're entitled to by contract. Um, many years we don't, but in some years when there is an administrator taking all three graduate courses, we do have to transfer. Um, since some of us aren't doing as much professional development, we usually budget under that contractual obligation and just move around as needed okay. to cover it. So that can, you, you can ask the finance administrator to put that kind of stuff in the sure. explanation. So yep. we have something to look at before we get here and we're not sure. wasting time. Yep. On explanations. Yep. Thank you. Real quick, so we don't elaborate, so we don't budget on a run rate basis just because we you know and it happens so frequently that we'll just go ahead and just do. Yeah, I'm not sure why it wasn't budgeted. So, so at this point, you're seeing sort of things that maybe didn't get put in to the budget. Maybe they were errors. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I, it happens when you start looking at the Yep. And, right. Uh, so now we have to, if we move some, if we move from one account to another, then it has yep. to be this an official right. transfer. Yep. Yeah. So this is the end of the year. Oh my gosh. How are we going to cover these things? So. Thank you. Yep. And so Amy, in yeah. terms of this particular page here to address Mr. Vader's concern, so the justification yep. that you reclass PD budgets to actual, if she can just put in more yeah. than just that. Yeah, Thank yep. you. I think typically there have not been lots of questions on budget transfers, yep. um, but if that's going to be something that folks want to look at closely, then I can absolutely awesome. have her have more robust information in there. Perfect. And then uh, going on to the next page. Yep. So that um, that is for we had an employee who um, was out of the office for a while, so we had to have some additional support. So that was a, a transfer um, from one area where we had some savings over to cover for that. And so we, I'm, I'm just trying not to use people's names. Yep. So. Yeah. Did somebody resign or? No, somebody um, was on leave. So that their salary got moved over to? How do we end up with a surplus in the superintendent office support salary? Um, that I don't know. I, I would have to take a look at that more deeply. Okay. Yeah. If, oh, yeah. Yeah, some of it is for health insurance. Some of it's for salary, too. Um, 2321. Yeah, it's only you. Oh, it could be. Yep. Ms. Facey, do you think something like this could be addressed in non-public? Sure. So maybe at the end of tonight. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Gothier, I don't think we're going to by seven. <laughs> um, Mr. Vade. Uh, or, no, no, I, 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 know, I know. Honestly, if you want to pull these, we can. I can. I, I can have more robust information, and we can just present them at, at even next four. Monday. We have one. Monday. Monday. I can do that. Fine. If you want to pull them all, and I'll have uh, have Katie do some additional work on them and bring them forward. Then great public information yep. on the document, yep. and then if we need to dive deeper, we can yeah. do it during our yep. non-public because we will have one on Monday. Yep. Okay. Because the next one is also, I, I believe, it looks like a sensitive topic as well. So okay, not one I would want it. It's a food service line. So okay. So let's uh, let's just pull those all together then for tonight. Is it okay with you, Mr. V? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, what else we're going to do? Great. Uh, so let's move down to uh, number seven. I think we're good with Ms. Gulia Zimmerman's updates by email. Was there any other corrections? I think, Ms. Clark, you had a question. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but I would um, appreciate if my comments at the end of the meeting could be added back in, um, since they were official situation, but they are specifically um, regarding what has been going on in these meetings. I think that they should be in there. Is that something we can do? Absolutely. I think that was done out of courtesy, but absolutely. We can, it, we can, I get yep. we, we can add that back. I'll, I'll, I'll review the video and then I'll add, add it back in as closely as possible. Sure. That's okay. I, just, I wasn't even going to put that at all, you know, but I appreciate it. Thank you. So let's pull number seven. We'll do that next week as well. Uh, number eight, Ms. Grund. 
Yes, um, so my question or not, it's, it's really more of a request for going forward. So as we hit the end of the school year and we have eighth graders moving into Sohegan, if we could make sure that we're tracking which eighth graders are leaving and going to a private school, which eighth graders might be leaving because they're moving out of town and how many are actually coming forward so we understand those movements, I think that's important for Sohegan. Yeah, we'll have a report for you. Fantastic, thank you. Happy to. Uh, facilities update number nine. Yep, um, I just wanted to draw attention to this. A lot of people have been asking us what we're currently doing in our different facilities. Um, these reports from Director of Facilities Roger Preston have been in included in um, all of the separate board meetings, but they're included here too to show us the updates and improvements that are happening throughout our district. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and then number 10, the technology update. I have a comment. Yes. even a placeholder. So I'd like an update on where, but we are with uh, website. Um, yeah, because so Hegan, yeah, because so Hegan was supposed to have a new website this year. So we can add that to a SAU meeting agenda. Unfortunately, our June one looks like it's going to be smaller um, with purpose. And then July or August, can we be prepared to have a presentation for that? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. So we're ready to launch a new website? Yeah, we're, yeah. Oh, even better. Yeah, so consulted anybody? No yeah. Okay. Um, cool. That's a surprise. Um, I will say in the technology update, it's awesome to see Mom Vernon included in that, so thank you. Um, any other questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, let's go ahead and do a motion to... Uh, the minutes are being pulled. So we're not yes. Yep. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, approve number one, number two, number three, number eight, nine, and ten. Motion by Mr. Gothier, second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Grund. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Uh, let's move on to our individual board updates, starting up with the Amherst School Districts. All right, so uh, we had quite a lengthy meeting on whatever it was, May 2nd, uh, earlier this month in May. We discussed uh, as the highlights our unsigned fund balance. We discussed a behavioral plan outline, beginning this process to work with staff, the administration, and the board to develop and implement plans um, for expectations, repercussions, dealing with issues that have really grown in the schools over the last couple of years, particularly exacerbated by COVID. We approved a preschool tuition increase of $100 for this year. Uh, we'll reevaluate again in, in two years, likely, for another potential $100 increase. This brings us in line and we're consistent with other programs uh, locally and then further around the state. Uh, and we also continued conversations about facilities, uh, prioritizing the elementary school level, but first and foremost, expressing a desire to work with JPAC and then working with South Hegan in whatever capacity we can, and then Mont Vernon as well, to truly make this a district-wide plan so that it's not, um, you know, it doesn't more than 83 million for Amherst and other projects get overlooked. We want to make this as comprehensive as we can so that it can really level set kind of a master plan for the entire district and not just uh, ASD, which what, is what it kind of morphed into last year um, based on need. So we to leave off those plans and, and work on getting that process started again. Awesome. And that is uh, pretty much it. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's go up the hill to Ms. Lawrence. So uh, the Mont Vernon School Board met on May 5th. Uh, we had a wonderful discussion about board goals, including a communication plan. We got a nutrition services update. We discussed our projected unexpended fund balance. Um, and a wonderful highlight was a presentation from our second and third grade teachers and students on writing and the importance <coughs> of learning to be effective writers. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Come down the hill to Ms. Brown. Sure. So we just had our meeting on Tuesday, and uh, we we actually split our agenda into two different meetings because it was 
becoming very large. Um, so we had our public hearing, audit presentation. We had a great presentation on mentoring, um, where our faculty have reinvented the mentoring program at the high school, where they're really working with the new teachers coming in, whether they're experienced or not. So not just on teaching instruction, but how do you navigate and work in Sohegan? Um, so it's a, more of a very, it's a very thoughtful sort of mentoring program. So it was great to hear. We had a JFAC discussion that very similar to yours, looking at wanting to make sure we include all the districts. And um, it's, it, it works it, it very much like Tom was saying. So I think we're in the same, same support. Uh, community council, we have, uh, they passed a change in their bylaws for community council um, or for community members of community council. So we just put a plea out for uh, anyone who's interested in joining community council um, from the community, from Amherst and Mount Vernon. They are, instead, we, instead of selecting our membership in the fall, we're selecting the members in the spring. So they start at the same time as the leadership in community council and they can work together through the retreat and be ready to go right in the fall. And they're also gonna be two year positions instead of just a one year position. So we're gonna do a rotating schedule. So you'll see on the SAU site and we're starting to advertise. So if anyone's interested in community council, please check out sau39.org for that announcement. Um, the, what else did we do? <laughs> we have so much going on. Tonight, there's the junior book awards that are going on. If you don't know what those are, it's where they celebrate um, some, some of the 11th graders through various books from colleges um, based on strong academic performances. So those certain juniors are down there being um, awarded those tonight. So very excited for them. I do wanna mention that they did have the vote of our faculty and staff on the union and that did not pass. So we are gonna continue working with the PPC and um, moving forward through all of our negotiations that way. What else? Project graduations coming up, graduations coming up. There's a lot, a lot happening. Um, so it was very exciting. And we have another meeting on Monday? No, next Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> next Thursday, uh, where we'll be discussing our changes in handbook. There's another community council mental health update um, where we're looking at a change to a policy. Uh, we're gonna talk about our uh, UFB, our board goals. So. Lots still going on. Um, culture and climate survey. Culture and climate survey, was yes. Was done. There was a culture and climate survey done um, from a through a third party that they are reviewing all the results now within the high school. And they had pretty good participation this year. So it's more than double of last year's participation. So they're reviewing that now and we'll hopefully get some report on that. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just so everyone is aware, the individual board updates, um, one thing that uh, I'm committed to is to making sure that this board is meeting after our other three boards. So we ran into some situations uh, last year where the Sohegan board was meeting after this, and it just, we were always one step um, in front of what they were doing. And so we were getting information that was a month in arrears. And so on the schedule, we're gonna see next month, we're gonna adopt our, our board meeting um, schedule you're going to see when appropriate and applicable. Now, I can't guarantee that everything will be after. Where appropriate and applicable, this meeting will be after all three of our, our other board meetings. We've also moved the four chairs meeting to before um, the week of uh, our board meetings, which is where they ended up uh, showing up, uh, at least over the last six months. Amherst was meeting on Monday, and then um, the, the four chairs were meeting to set agendas on Friday. So Amherst was always actually one step behind as well. So we're moving that actually now to the third week of the month. So we got some consistency there so we can add, move stuff around. Today was a great example. The reason why we broke this meeting up, our agenda was enormous. Uh, we had to divide it up. And so Steffi and I had partnered together to figure out what could work from a timing standpoint. There needed to be a JFAC conversation at that level before that was brought here. And um, obviously the issue at the beginning of our meeting clearly was going to be long, but didn't end up being so. so. Um, that's that's our goal for to make sure that this meeting is always after the others. Um, moving on, transition superintendent uh, uh, report. Um, Mr. Chamberlain. Sure. No, I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, thoughtful looking ahead. It's a very unique transition as I've been um, on site for, for you know, beginning my 10th, 11th month. 
um, feel like very um, comfortable with relationships with colleagues and understanding um, how things work. So, but it's kind of fun to think about how to proactively plan a continued integration so we have a continuity uh, of operations in this extraordinary place. Um, not married to this, just dating it, not even engaged yet. So I love feedback on it. Uh, really want to spend a lot of time trying to uh, really, uh, I mean, Ab and I have worked very closely together, but there's certain things that he has very unique approaches to um, that I want to make sure that I learn as much as I can from him and carry on. Uh, he's always extraordinarily gracious with his time. He is always on call 24 hours a day for all of us. Um, so that will continue. Uh, Hopefully, we'll also part of the plan. We'll meet individually with all the board members around this table. I'd love some time individually. Really, it's uh, it's about uh, and I've already started. I've inter I've started exit interviews and interviewing uh, families who tuition stand. I just find their expectations. If, for someone to make a choice to spend, you know, their own dollars to come, I, I, I and spend some time with a gentleman and his family. Fourteen years of tuition into this SE, which I thought was fascinating. Um, and learned a lot. And so, so interviewing, ex-interviewing everybody, interviewing those who tuition, hope we'll start working, interviewing with everybody around this table. But really is, it's, it's about priority setting. What, what are the priorities and, and where to leverage our time? Spend some time, um, I've got some time coming up with Tom, spend some time with, with, with Anna and Kathleen. Obviously I've spent, being secondary, I've spent a lot of time at this place in AMS. Um, so uh, just really trying to integrate, uh, trying to have the discussions about what's the most important thing, where are we, uh, where can we improve, where can we leverage, where can we put our priorities, our high leverage strategies. Um, not true, I mean, I, I, I don't, and maybe someone's gonna smack me sometime, I don't feel interim, I just feel like it's the job and I'll work as hard as I can and try and uh, make sure we're putting our time in the best, you know, the, the time and space that is needed at the, you know, in the most. Um, love the discussions. Christine and I have uh, real spirited conversations uh, where I learn a lot and, um, and everybody's been incredibly gracious to me in this community. Um, so love your feedback. Uh, already got some other ideas driving around coming back this morning. I said, well, I can add that. So you'll see it develop over time. Um, but really it's about integrating into the community and as well as understanding the priorities and making sure we're putting a time in the best way possible. Let's open up for questions, Mr. Crawford. So my, my question is not on this specific items that you laid out tonight, the meetings that you're setting up, but it's more along the project course and timeline and, and agenda for Adam to make sure that we're taking advantage of, of his capabilities and his schedule to be able to get the, um, the full benefit of his consulting services for the three and a half months or two and a half months that he's going to be in that role. Absolutely. I feel... Um... I think he's arranging sometimes with, with the building principals as well to continue to support them. Uh, he's at the central office as well. Um, you know, I feel very good uh, about uh, his accessibility and his support for all areas of his direct reports. Um, so I, I think that'll be a, a very positive piece in this transition. Do we have a project list that we are going to have him focus on? Have we figured out? You know, it's one thing to, to you know to know what he's going to support, but it's another to say these are the items that we that we want to have get done, as opposed to just, I guess, really truly a consulting role. I, I feel like there's going to be some needs that we can utilize him to fill, whether it's BA duties or if it's sure. AEA stuff. And happy to flesh that out in the next iteration. One of the things that off the top of my head. Um, I really have to dig in deep on how he evaluates and, and directs the evaluation of the administrative team, but that's unique. Um, Adam's um, dedication to the safety policies, procedures, practices, and knowledge is incredible. That's a huge project for me on how to understand where he is on, on life safety in this district because it is a very strong area. Uh, his, as Amy already talked about, his knowledge and understanding of the, of the compensation and, and CBA is a huge project for me. Um, trying to connect with him on that. Um, so yeah, and I can absolutely flesh that out more and how he's supporting, like uh, I know, like the, uh, Mike had a, a very important meeting with him today. To, so how he's, and I can ask others to like, how is Adam gonna support Mike, which is very pro, you know, and all that. So happy to flesh that out. But feel um, very good about doing as much as I can to have a Vulcan brain link with him so we can continue as we go. Ms. Priest. Um, I was happy to see on here weekly communication with the community. 
Um, I think that's something that we're, the community is looking for communication um, and, and for a little bit more color and to get to know you. Um, and as you said, as the interim superintendent, but I'm glad that you feel after almost a year here that you belong is, is a wonderful compliment to a lot of people who have been around you. So thank you. Yeah, they've been great. Very gracious to me. Um, the, the part two and three, or the part two part uh, under the table, um, is it a typo? It says revision. Do you mean reversion? So, thank you. I, and it's May 16, which is a, yeah, and still I, in the middle of school. I, I don't know if that was intentional that was, or what the, exactly that was supposed to mean. No, and thank you. And I apologize. And to be completely honest with this group, it has been a challenge for me to get my arms around this place recently. Um, the, there is a significant stimuli coming to all of us. And some people on this dais are very well suited to handle the amount of stimuli coming, where I'm just trying to learn. So there's two other components. One is, um, how, well, what is the, how is my current position? How is that going to be suited going forward? What are we going to do with the assistant superintendent role? And that's currently, right, me. And as I transition there, how are we going to, what's that going to look like? And, and Christy and I have started having those conversations. Adam and I have started those conversations. Amy and I have had those started conversations. But, and I apologize, I haven't been able to flesh that out yet. But that's what that means is, what does this position going to look like going forward? Because it's a year position. Um, and, and so how does that transition work? And, and I've started, but I was unable to complete that work in yep. time for this meeting. Sure. And then I, I didn't realize until today, John, wow, we have another meeting on Monday. And is, that, is that the 16th? Maybe I got that date wrong. Uh, yes. So that my plan was to have something ready for Monday. Um, but that's like tomorrow in my life. Right. And, and, and so, but I'm going to work hard and try to get that done. But it's about what does this position look like in, the, in, the, uh, in July 1. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Cooley, you say Monday. I won't be upset if it's not Monday. Take, take the time you need. Thank you. You, know, you don't have to work all weekend on this, too. I appreciate it. Um, when, you, when you talk about, I saw the leaving, those leaving the district. Um, and I heard you mention students, um, and I don't know that this necessarily falls within this role, but I'm wondering, I mean, does that include teachers, staff? Because I think we should be doing exit interviews it, it, by correct. someone for everyone. It is. It's, so Amina does a lot, but I have some interesting questions. Yes, so it's, that's why it's not just retirees. It's anybody who, who, who will be willing enough and gracious right. enough to sit with me. So, I'm, uh, so I am doing uh, faculty and staff who are leaving the district, exit interviewing them. Okay. And is there like a, like we talked about it, so Hegan, Mike found, um, you know, the survey was got, obtained from a third party source that had some experience and knowledge in, in doing these. Is there like a template or something that you use for them? I just want to make sure we're getting good feedback, bad feedback, and that that's somehow getting shared with the boards to whom those individuals, you know, would have fallen under. Sure. Um, to be completely, I use the same form that I developed and used as superintendent in the other district. Perfect. Um, it, it's, it hasn't been, it's not evidence research based, I believe I said that, um, but it, it provided the information and uh, um, in compiling it and, and themes, um, creating themes and sharing themes with this board um, about the exit interviews, be happy to do, and self interest. Uh, it has been, I think I'm, I'm, it's just started, so I've done five, six, and people are incredibly uh, gracious with their time for me. Um, and I think. Uh, I've uh, very I've appreciated those conversations very much. Okay. Do you feel they're being candid? I do. Good. I do. Ms. Grund and then Mr. Um, I just want to encourage you to leverage the administration you have in the schools because I know like here at Sohegan we have some phenomenal administration um, with Dana, with Mike, uh, with the domain leaders and things that if there's anything that can be taken off of your plate and pushed. <laughs> I know they have a lot on their plate too, but if there's a balance that can be had, please don't forget that they're there. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm reminded daily that they're there. I was kidding. They're fantastic. Uh, <laughs> no, it's great. And the whole is greater than some of its parts. Um, the two people sitting to my right and Amina in front of us, we work incredibly close together. Everybody, um, I don't, more it's, it's, for me, it's a working style with incredible amount of stimuli and how do I stay so I was talking to Amina today about this, like, I'll start something and someone interrupt me and I go, whoops, I forgot. So it's more of just my weakness, but I'll get better. We all have that. <laughs> Mr. Bates, I want to say that I, oh, thank you for 
putting yourself in this position and, and doing the job that you're doing. And I, I love the idea of the, the exit interviews. And uh, I was wondering if there are situations where they tell you something, the, the interviewee tells you something that maybe you ask them if you could share it with us, you know, because I know that's going to be personal situations that come up that maybe you, you wouldn't feel, feel comfortable sharing with us on a very comfortable in themes. Yeah. But uh, I think out of specific, the specific, but themes I'm very comfortable with. Okay. Um, and to be completely honest, I am privileged and humbled to be in this seat. Um, so it is, it is my honor to, to do this work. Um, on, it's not all of this work is, is exactly how I design. Um, but I can tell you this, um, talking with the people here and the administrators and teachers about how we do what's best for kids and how we care about kids doesn't get any better than that for me. Um, and as long as, as that keeps going and, and that's what we're talking about, I'm all in. Any other questions? So my question is this, um, per the agreement, we're supposed to approve the transition plan in May. So we have tonight and Monday. Would you be comfortable with us making a motion to approve the framework of this transition plan with updates to follow in June? 100%. Is that okay with everyone? And it'll be regular updates all the way through September, as far as I'm concerned. The work and. Yeah, so this, based on what I just heard, is this more or less as a framework of the transition plan? Uh, and he's got this as a work in progress, and clearly Monday being a very tight deadline. I don't know if he's going to be able to spend the amount of time based on the feedback that we provided for him to include some of that stuff as well as things that he's going to identify with meeting with some of these employees and maybe some task management uh, assignment to uh, our consulting superintendent. I think is uh, the, uh, <laughs> Eric, uh, I don't know that page. yeah, consulting superintendent to, to sort of figure out more of the cohesion there. And I think we can definitely get an update there, but the agreement does require us to approve it this month. So I want to at least acknowledge and do the spirit of the agreement, and then obviously look for an update in June. So we're expecting this, but potentially more regular. Yeah. Works for me. Thank you for your grace. I appreciate it. Oh, I just wanted to try this thing. <laughs> yeah. Any questions, Mr. Clark? Yeah, on that, um, and that, any of the details subject to change. The who, for example, subject to change. The activities could be modified, added, new activities Thank could be you. added, timelines could be shifted. Um, but the notion of the framework, which you're talking about, I'm just trying to get a confirmation, is really like this format, putting in some key activities, assigning who they're doing, providing a kind of a schedule, notion of schedule is what we're talking about, and we like that framework. So please fill it in and modify it as you see fit and keep us updated. So we're not really married to the, to the, to the language, we're married to the framework. Kind of what yeah, you're so it's not our job to micromanage the district, right? <clears throat> so from a assignment standpoint of who does what, I think from um, a spirit of what the agreement was, was to make sure that we knew that both parties were responsible for certain things. So life safety stuff, right? And so adopting life safety or updating life safety uh, protocols could be a part of the framework. Who does it? I'm going to leave that up to our interim superintendent. Like I think that is completely within inside his scope and, and his authority and what he should be directing. Um, but I, I hear loud and clear, we wanted to make sure that the spirit of the agreement in which it was constructed, right, is to make sure that um, we weren't in a situation where we weren't taking advantage of a skill set that Mr. Steele has over the course of the time frame between now and the end of the contract. So that, that's my understanding, mm -hmm. or at least that's my perspective. Yeah, well, I, and I raised the question just because I don't know that we've really had a conversation about what that consulting role Tom was alluding to it earlier what is what are those projects what are those metrics um, and and what role you know decisions about our future employees and our future goals you know maybe that's not quite the right place for that but but shoring up some some weaknesses like with the expertise in the business office and and life safety like that sounds you know right at right in the zone to me um, so there are some lines in here where it's it's very future looking with the consulting piece included and i i don't know that's kind of where i got tripped up on it without totally deconstructing this because I, I i get it that it's a working document i want to give you 
Steve, the, the flexibility and, and space to be able to hone this um, uh, in, in your own good time. So I don't want to, I'm not here to beat you up about it, but I did have some questions, particularly about that role. I don't feel beat up enough. Okay. Support it. Great. So we see no other questions. Um, let's go ahead and entertain a motion to approve the framework of the agreement so we can satisfy, I'm sorry, of the uh, transition plan so we can satisfy the, the spirit of the agreement and look for an update uh, in, in June, if that's okay with you. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Perfect. First by Ms. Priest, second by Mr. Bayou. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's go ahead and do uh, a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Great, and I see that unanimous, so there's no abstentions or ayes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, All right, lunch program. So, um, parents in the in the community received an email. Uh, with regards to the federal support of our lunch program and how that's terminating uh, here uh, at the end of the school year. And so I had asked that this be included in the agenda, number one, to make sure that we are included in that conversation, and then number two, to see if there's anything from a directionary standpoint that we would like our leadership to reach out to our federal delegation and say, hey, this is a program that has worked for us. This is a program that was popular here. Uh, this is a program that we would hope that they would support continuing, obviously, I'm not going to make that decision on behalf of all of us, but I thought that we would at least have a conversation about it. So I asked Ms. Facey to actually pull up some statistics with regards to the program and um, speak briefly about how it's benefited our, our district, the increase in participation uh, at the student level, uh, and more importantly, the, the significant cost savings to our community. So Ms. Facey. And I have some information. Um, this was a late add to the agenda, so um, just found out about it. I think this week. Yeah, well, we got um, the email on yeah, Thursday of last yeah, week. Yeah, so right. We talked about this on Friday. Yeah, so, um, and I will say that uh, Crystal's had a very challenging week. Um, there is a number of staff that are out in the Amherst district. The Mont Vernon kitchen manager um, had a an accident today, so she's fine, but uh, Crystal is going to be working up there for the rest of the school year, most likely. So. So I'm just prefacing that I have partial information. She was she had to leave um, quickly today to go up to Mount Vernon. So so I do have some information. Um, I will also share that uh, Crystal has had already reached out to Representative Custer, um, lobbying for or um, for the extended waiver. So that was done. She reached out to our uh, our state senator. And he sent her to um, Representative Custer, but so she has made that um, made that effort on our behalf. But certainly, I think having the board uh, contemplate doing that as well would would be um, useful. So she was able to pull up some stats for FY 20, 21, and twenty two. Um, Mont Vernon school lunch participation has gone from twenty five percent to thirty five this year 55 percent amherst uh, went from 29 to 43 to 60 percent and so hegan went from 20 to 30 to 38 percent uh, free and reduced lunch applications are not high um, in in any of the districts from fy 20 to 21 22 mount vernon only four applications then six then six amherst it's been pretty steady, 32, 36, 32, and so Hegan, 20, 20, 20. So um, certainly a large number of our students are benefiting from the, um, the free lunches that are being served. I know at our meeting, we had a, a very decent presentation from our nutrition director, and she did comment about how um, budgetary-wise, um, our districts are actually um, positive. Uh, as yeah. a result of not only this program, but having the ability for kids to participate at a much higher level, yes. uh, deliver outstanding product to, to our community, and uh, come well within a positive budget. And that is across all three of the school districts. Um, Amherst is ha is projecting a large surplus, over 160 to 170,000. Um, Mont Vernon is in the 3,000 range, but certainly will um, at least break even um, and possibly do better. And so Hegan was projected 
to have a budget transfer of over 41,000 and it, we're at about nine right now and we're hoping to get it down to five. So yes, this program has significantly benefited all three districts from a financial standpoint, as well as for um, providing lunches for, for our kids and breakfast. Any questions? Ms. Crow. Um, so I know the email went out to parents about just sign up for free and reduced lunches. Can we encourage her to resend it, but put some sort of guidelines? Because it's just asking, fill out your wages, fill out your earnings. And you know, most of us are going to look at it and go like, yeah, I'm not going to qualify, so I'm not going to bother. But we don't know what that cutoff is. Okay. If she could resend it and say, if your salary or your wages are in yeah. this range so or provide el eligibility requirements. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to have people making, you know, who knows what the cutoff is. It could be 80,000, could be 70, could be, that yeah. could make it, but they're yeah. like, oh no, I'm making too much anyway. And I guess it depends on family size. So yeah, it does, it so does there's but there's, there's got to be some sort of parameter or yep. chart that it can look at. Sure. I think that might be more effective. Yeah. Okay. The school is Zimmerman. Sure. I was just going to say, I think there's a link she can just send because I'm yeah. pretty sure the state has it with a, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, I will, I'll um, I'll talk to her and figure out the best way to get that yeah. information out. Mm -hmm. Ms. Clark and then Ms. Roy. I just want to put from a public health perspective, like what you're talking about is exactly the barrier to making sure that there's equitable access to lunch, is that there's this, I won't qualify anyway because I don't qualify for other things. Mm -hmm. Go to this link, fill out this paperwork, you have to fill out this, like it just has the barriers that the most vulnerable or least likely to contribute. So that's what is so effective about this, is it really brings this kind of equity across districts that we didn't have before. Right. Mr. White. Can I share? I talked a little bit about this at the Amherst School Board because we talked about the filling out of the lunch forms. Um, I don't know how to word it exactly, um, it, but it is to the benefit of the community if every single person fills it out because we get more federal money um, via Title I services, so Title I money. So even if they're not going to qualify, they don't think they're going to qualify. I think if we can just like maybe have some exp some narrative about that, like, hey, fill it out even if you don't feel like you're going to qualify, because the more who fill it out, the more likely we are to get some money, and a lot of that money is used for intervention and some of our more vulnerable students. Yeah, but isn't that going to be based off the number of? Sorry, isn't that going to be based off the number of kids that are accepted into the program and not just applications? Yeah, like, you know, no. It makes a million dollars a year, and just because five millionaires fill it out doesn't mean that we're going to get five credits for for, um, for Title I, does it? No, no, you're, you're right. But I guess if my thought is, you know, we don't know, I don't know the exact metrics. So if everybody fills it out, we have a better shot at getting more families to qualify as opposed to... Um, no, I understand your point. Your points. Yeah, no, well and, and I get your point as well. I, I just think that I, I just found an article online that said it was uh, one hundred eighty-five percent of the poverty level in two thousand nine. That was forty-nine thousand for a family of four. So I don't imagine the numbers shot up to two hundred thousand in the last couple of years. So I think it's um, there's a lot of effort there and a lot of giving up of private information if you're not going to qualify for it. Um, and while it may be beneficial for the district, I think that even on the state's website, it said that maybe 72% of, no, excuse me, not 72, uh, in Amherst, according to the DOE, 5.86% are eligible in Amherst. So we're not terribly far off from that right now. And we have 38 that have, or 32 in Amherst, and we can really only have 60, give or take. So I just want us to, you know, know what our expectations are, um, that we're working on a limited eligibility factor here. Ms. <clears throat> I think a balance between the two is really what we're hoping to strike here as a community. We're hoping to de take away the stigma of applying for free and reduced lunch so that any families who possibly are on that margin are able to receive services, um, or in this case, food. Um, at the same time, I understand there are many families in Amherst who are affluent and would not find themselves in that category, but I think it's very important as a district that we word that very carefully to make sure that we're sensitive to all students in our district. Our family, I mean, oh, thank you. Um, I mean, we couldn't get my daughter to eat certain things, the five-year-old. And she came home one day and she said, well, you know, they had, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like French toast or, 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 or something like that. Yeah. And my wife said to her, 
well, you could have some. She goes, no, I don't have any money. I said, no, no, it's it's free this year. Try it. Well, we couldn't get her to drink milk. Now she drinks milk all the time. And I guess that's one case of positive peer reinforcement because nice. her okay. friends were drinking it. She now eats carrot sticks, which she wasn't doing before. So beyond the financial aspect, just nutritionally, I think it really is going to benefit our community because now you have kids that are kind of on the fence, yeah. picky eaters, and they're saying, hey, let me try that, and where we couldn't get her to do that at home. So certainly kudos to. I think that's because the police department gave her that. Like, this is safe. I can drink Pro it. Probably, probably. Yeah. Oh, they had to drink it. That's right. Cops would get her. Yeah. 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 Um, any other questions? Is there an appetite for us to instruct our leadership to, to write a letter to our delegation and say, this is something that's greatly benefited our community? And how many dorks write the letter? I can do that. Are you comfortable doing that? I was I'm not comfortable, but I'll do it. When, when we talked about this in advance, uh, I yeah. spoke with Adam, uh, and I was looking for the letter to come from the district leadership, so it represents everybody. But we can send it from the board, from the board's perspective, if that's your preference. Yeah, and Crystal has already done that, but yeah. um, so, so it's. Like signing off on a letter that Crystal maybe can draw up, and then we can co sign. Maybe the, the, the three district chairs. Are we sending it to anyone in particular? Because All of them. Okay. All right, because we do have, we do so have contact with the customer's office, so I can certainly reach out to yeah. someone yeah. in her office as well. I do as well. So. Yeah, okay. And maybe some of that personal So how would you like to do that, Amy? Would you like us to do a motion to appoint SAU leadership to do it? Sure. Or, yep. And then yeah. maybe George can partner with, with our nutrition. Oh, partner, I'll work. Yeah. To draw yeah. something and yeah. have that come from, from us. Yep. That'd be great. Okay. Yep. So I'm let's sure do a motion to it. do that. A motion to instruct our district leadership to write correspondence with the federal delegation uh, in support of the, the continuation of the Blue Line program. Yes. Support the waiver. Yep. The waiver. Made by Ms. Precy. Second. Thank you, Ms. Hickey. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say or raise your hands. Great. Opposed? And abstentions. Um, well, I, I was just chewing still. I, I love I love Georgia's story. Up to that point, I was like, no, if you can afford lunch, then whether it's the district with federal taxes, right? You're, I'm not, I know the session is over. No such so. thing as a free lunch. Uh, right? And, and I'm telling you this as, I'll be completely honest with you, our family has been in the position due to our daughter's medical issues. So I, have, I have filled out the applications for food stamps. I have filled out the WIC, right? So I know what this takes. I understand the stigma. I cried every six months when it was time to recertify. I hated it. Um, but George gives me some pause that there is something to be said for peer. So fine, I'll, I'm good. How would you like to vote? Oh, yes, would that okay. So that was unanimous. <laughs> but if you didn't look at me, we would have just left it that way. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so if I didn't say anything, I wouldn't have this extra work. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah. Let's duly sure. noted. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next thing is with regards to the superintendent search. And Amina's here to talk a little bit about this. So I don't know, Amina, if you want to come up to the chair of honor. Thanks for coming. Yes. <laughs> I don't have a lot prepared, so I'm happy to um, get some feedback, feedback from you guys to see what you're looking for. But I did um, reach out to my colleagues, other HR directors, and um, obtain some information on who they used in their school districts. Um, so, for example, Mer Mer uh, Merrimack School District and Manchester School D District used McPherson and Jacobson Company. Um, Milford used NASDAQ, so that's another option that I can look into. And uh, Dairy and London Dairy recently used the Brian Group. So I'm happy to reach out and get a quote and send you guys information and have you decide who you'd like to go with. Um, any questions? Yes, well, I mean, what, what I was hoping that we could do is we can get two volunteers from each board uh, to partner with you over the next 30 days mm -hmm. to figure out a game plan for, for the district and then bring that back to us for our June meeting. And then from there, we can at least have what the vision looks like 
from a recruiting standpoint. Okay. We're going to hire an outside mm -hmm. um, headhunter. We're going to do everything in-house uh, like we did last time. So like kind of reviewing what the pros and cons of each one are, the costs associated with it, uh, and allowing each one of our three boards to have say and participation in that process. Um, and also, this isn't necessarily the committee that's going to go out and do the search. This is the committee that's going to formulate the process okay. uh, around the search. Um, because I would really love to see a process that's collaborative across both communities. Mm -hmm. that involves participation from all of our stakeholders. That's mm -hmm. business leaders, that's parents, that's students, that's community members that have no ties to the school whatsoever, meaning just taxpayers. Uh, and then, of course, our employees across the board, whether you're a lawnmower all the way up to the assistant superintendent, right? So, um, you know, making sure that everyone's got sort of that, that conversation. So I think the easiest way, uh, if you're amenable mm -hmm. to it, is over the course of the next 30 days, have this sort of subcommittee of us work with you to figure out what that actually looks like. Okay. And um, that would involve teachers, community members, school board Not members, so or just the... Just yeah, the school so, board. Yeah, so this board is responsible for hiring. Of yeah. Um, what this committee will do is figure out what that process looks like. Okay. Right? And so out of that, then we start to involve all the other various stakeholders. Okay, I'm happy this to This is just do a that. preliminary, let's frame the, the, the process, uh, and then actually bring everybody in, into the fold. Okay. That's my thought. Any questions, concerns? Can I recommend that we don't look at BWP and Associates of Libertyville, Illinois to conduct the search, considering they hired a Nashua superintendent who wasn't <laughs> qualified to serve in that role? Yeah. yeah. And let's make sure we don't go after him as a fallback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure he is. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do a motion to start the committee, 30-day okay. sort of mandate, sure. report back at our June 6th meeting, and then uh, we'll appoint members. So uh, a motion to start a superintendent search process committee to formulate the process on how we're going to look for a new superintendent. Um, we'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Gauthier. Second by Ms. Peters. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's go ahead and call the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Great. It's uh, unanimous. So let's go ahead and uh, poll the, the membership here. Who would like to serve on this extremely important committee? We'll start with the Amherst School Board. Two members. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like you guys will decide that, right? And so this, this because there's not a majority of members there, so we can have um, Zoom sessions for this. So this isn't a have to be in person type, uh, type event. Um, Although for Nina, during the day. Would yeah, be preferably, fun. obviously, you know, to respect her time. We don't want to be doing a Saturday morning. Yeah, thank so. you. <laughs> Mr. Conklin? Miss Preecy, great. Good age to get that. Awesome. So let's move to Mavar. We have Miss Hinkley, and I'm going to be writing a letter. So. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Clark, okay. And then so he, Miss Willie Zimmerman, Miss Grub. Or I thought Dan wants to be on the two. Mr. Willie, right, so he could do that for you without us busting the clock. Sure. You know, we should have two though, so it's equal by by everybody. So we'll be doing three, and so he can. I, I can I can back out on this. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. So Mr. Willie Zimmerman, Mr. Vave. Okay. Perfect. Can I just clarify the process? Yep. So we very quickly, sorry, I couldn't catch all of it. Sure. Outlined certain data points that you're going to be gathering. Is that correct? Or are we going to yeah, be so working guys, together? You guys, you're going to meet. You guys are going to set up uh, an appointment uh, okay. with with the, uh, <laughs> and to figure out what this all looks like, right? And so. And, and I'm making this all up. This is all hypothetical, right? So you guys may come back and say, we want to start a search committee in the month of August. Uh, and on that search committee, we're going to have two representatives of our faculty, two representatives of our student population, two representatives of business owners, two representatives of this. And we're going to meet to come up with what we want out of a superintendent, what we're looking for out of a superintendent, um, what the community expects, formalize what that actually looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and start advertising in September interviews in October, uh, appointment uh, to this board by, by January. Like, all hypothetical, right? But this, you guys are going to formulate what that actually looks like. Or we're going to go out and hire a headhunter. It's going to go out and do a national search, bring somebody who's the best candidate back and avoid all that. Like, however you guys want to formulate what you think is the best uh, for, for our community. And then we'll talk about it in, uh, in June. Thank you. All right. So huge blank, uh, blank canvas. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Amina.
Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. This was easy. <laughs> the first part was. The first part. <laughs> All right. The second thing is uh, with regards to the budget process. And uh, a very similar kind of uh, approach I wanted to take, and that is to sort of figure out what we're going to do from an SAU budgetary process. So when I first joined this board, the SAU budget process was actually very, very simple, right? And so we had the budget presented to us. Each individual board then met. We carved through it. The SAU board chair attended. Each district sent a representative. Their budget committee sent a representative. And everyone uh, basically tore it apart, built it back up, and then came back to this board in, uh, in November for approval. Um, this year, we had a letter that was drafted or crafted. Do you remember what that date was? It was like 2002 or, or three. Uh, the letter that said we weren't doing it properly. Oh, well. It was over a decade old. And I have, yeah, I do have some information. Yeah, so. We, we actually are doing it properly. We just were able to get the yeah, so what, what we're what I would like to do with this board's permission is to sort of craft what that actually should look like now, right? And so not take a document that's a decade old, not take uh, the, the the practices of the most recent board members because I think that's been unfortunately the norm. I think the community wants more transparency into the process, more say and more dialogue into that. And so I want to see if we can create uh, again a subcommittee that can craft what this process will actually look like where then we can adopt it, formulate it in a policy to our policy committee, and then move that. And so that is the actual practice. And then amend it as time goes on. So that's my thought. It's my wish. I'm thinking I think that is something the community wants and expects. Uh, and um, I'm hoping this board agrees. Consensus to do it? Can you call, make a motion out of that that someone could give? Yeah, so it, it's, it's actually quite simple. It's to, to create a, a committee uh, to create our SAU 39 budgetary process and work with our business administrator or um, business lead, Ms. Facey. I'll make the motion. Great. First by Second. Ms. Peters, seconded by Mr. Gauthier. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in, Ms. Priestley, go ahead. Um, yeah. We have to have some discussion when we talk about something like this that's yeah. been talked about in our community so heavily. Um, the importance of the SAU budget is important. It's important to our residents. Um, I'm happy to hear us you know, moving forward and coming up with a deeper dive into what we know has already been done, but making sure that it's prepared for the future. Um, so for that reason, I support it. Awesome. And to take the document that we were presented to this year um, with hopefully some senior and some new members of this committee um, to go ahead and craft what the new vision actually looks like. Mr. Um, what what problem are we trying to solve? It, the problem is we weren't following any process from a budgetary standpoint for the last five years of my tenure on this board. Um, it was kind of piecemeal, done um, ad hoc, where a member of the community brought this piece of paper or document to say, you should be following it this way based on an agreement that was basically adopted in 2002 or three. I don't know the date. The document I have... Um, it doesn't have a date on it, yeah. but basically it's structured where um, there's a, a SAU budget committee set up similar to Ways and Means where there's one representative from each of the district's budget committees, so advisory finance, Ways and Means, Mount Vernon budget, and then there's also supposed to be three community members. I can't tell if the three community members are supposed to come from be appointed by the SAU board or one from each individual district. So I know communications were sent out to recruit public members and only one came forward this year. I think only one came forward last year. Um, so, and, and that one person happened to be on Ways and Means. <laughs> so there were that community member, there was one Ways and Means community member and one advisory finance committee member. Um, the process was actually followed similar to the budget process of all the school districts. Yeah. So. There um, were presentations to the boards. There was the same um, uh, process using the Google Doc where folks could put in questions. A number of you all put in uh, questions. A number of the budget committee members put in questions. They were answered. And then there was a, um, I think there were two presentations, and then there was a um, public hearing. 
Um, there was only one budget committee meeting with an offer to have another one if necessary, and folks didn't um, see the, the need for that. Yeah. So all that being said, I do agree, though, Stephen, that I think maybe relooking at that because there is um, seems to be a sentiment that the SEU budget maybe was not thoroughly vetted. Um, I think it was vetted in a very similar manner to the other budgets. However, there was not um, as much community participation as I think all of us would like, similar to being disappointed when we didn't have a Mount Vernon budget committee. That was disappointing. So um, I think having a task force or committee to take a look at how we can um, get more community participation Maybe there's a different process that needs to be looked at. I think that's a great idea. Perfect. So it's kind of like Budget Committee 2.0 and refreshing it for 2022 and figuring out what that actually looks like. Oh, look at I saw that. <laughs> um, to, to, to better sort of define what, uh, what it looks like going forward. And I think the community has been asking for, for this at least over the last uh, year, year and a half, based on feedback from my community up at Mall Vernon. People have talked about it. Uh, they just they felt that there was a perception of, of not enough transparency, and I think that's 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 pretty vital. Mr. B. One, one thing that I would recommend that we consider is um, our RSA 194C allows the RSU RSA, SAU budget to be put on a on the ballot as a separate foreign article, and it, that may enhance transparency in people's feelings towards the budget if they actually get a chance to see it on the ballot with the other three budgets. And it has to be adopted by both communities, correct? And actually all three districts. I just, yeah, it has to be a Warren Arms. Wait, wait, the only reason I know is it's because it's been brought forward through some mem members in the community already yeah. take a look at it. So just a heads up. Okay. Yeah, it would have to be a Warren article that for next year and then implement it the following budget, year. The district yeah. budget or yeah. district warrant. Yeah. And the Warren article needs to appear. Yeah, there's Thank lots you. to consider in that. The, um, the uh, apportionment would probably not change um, for the other districts in terms of budgeting because you would have to budget at the higher of the default or the proposed um, because you need to make sure that you have those funds. So it wouldn't necessarily help the um, school budgets that are being proposed, but it would potentially um, meet the need for transparency if folks don't feel that the budget process is, is transparent enough. Ms. Gulley, did you have your hand raised? No, I'm sorry. Any other comments before we vote? Yeah, I Love just, um, you, you make it sound like we don't have a process, but what Amy described is something that's been going on. I'm not saying that. Well, okay, no. but it's like there's fundamental flaws in it. I mean, a lot of people, it's, it's very modeled after what we do in each individual district, which is a lot of representation, civically and board representation through the Ways and Means and the Finance Advisory Committee the problem is, is what going on what Dan was talking about is that at the end of the day, nobody but we have a say of what that number is. That's that's the problem. I don't really, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, the, we could form a committee. I'm not necessarily stand on the way and we can talk about about stuff, but I don't know what that what the goal is. I'm a little confused, and it's just it's hard to hear a concept about where we want to go. And in, and in 45 seconds or five minutes, you know, make a decision as to whether or not that's the right decision to make. I would have appreciated some heads up as to what the ideas were to be able to contemplate and to be able to have a robust discussion. So that may be a recommendation for future. Uh, can Share I, these can ideas. Miss Peters, but go ahead. Beforehand. I just want to clarify, this is forming committee so we can talk about what, pol what procedure we want to put in place. Right, I understand. So this, we're not making that decision now to go forward with whatever was decided. I, I, okay. I understand what the idea was to bring a committee together. Ms. Peters? And I just wondered, I thought I understood you to be saying that the idea might be to have some community members also involved with that budget process? So the idea and the motion on the floor is to go ahead and craft a committee to design what our budgetary process looks like going forward, right? And so. So we don't know what it will look like. To, to address Mr. Glover's concerns about transparency and, and you know, the, the participation, I, I believe we've been following a correct process. Right? That's, I, I have no qualms about that. But the perception out there is that they want more say in that process. And so for us to acknowledge that, recognize that there's an opportunity to improve our current process, 
Um, that document that was raised this year because of our change of business administrators, we weren't following, right? And so when was that adopted? Was it adopted in 2002, 2012, 2015? Was it ever even adopted? It was just something presented saying that this was adopted. So if we go ahead and have a committee that then formulates what this process should actually look like, we can then create a policy that going forward, this is the process. So a new BA comes on board, this is exactly what the budgetary process is for this body. Um, we're gonna go to Ms. Lawrence first, go back to you. Um, I was just gonna wonder um, if it would make more sense to send this to the policy committee first to review what's actually there to see if we are in fact following it or where we are going awry because that's what the policy committee does with standing policy. Okay. Instead of necessarily starting by forming a new committee, use the process that's already in place. And then if action needs to be taken, the policy committee members who are already members of this board would be able to say, we think this needs to happen going forward. There isn't a policy. I, I don't know where this document came from. A community member gave it to me, but it we are, we are following the process that's been in place ever since I was on the board. The problem was the participation um, and being able to get members of the public to participate. So I think certainly that is something that can be improved upon greatly. Um, but I think, Stephen, you're talking more globally looking at the, is that the process that we do want to follow? Is, is that the right way of going about looking at the SAU yeah. budget? Yeah, it's to take what we've been doing uh, over the past you know, couple XYZ years, yeah. this document which we tried to implement at the last minute this year, or say, or at least acknowledge that we weren't, um, we'll try to do that next year, and try to find what what we want as a body this budgetary process to actually look like, mm -hmm. based on feedback from this, this subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bate. I, I agree with Ms. Lawrence that it, the proper place is probably to start in the, in the policy committee, but I think from what I've heard, the policy committee is pretty overwhelmed with a lot of policies already under review. Well, they actually really did it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, I'm serious. Oh, okay. you know, if, unless, you know, it might be good to have a, a committee that specifically looks at this and can move it through fast. But if that's not the case, then I would draw my concerns. <laughs> so I guess if you send it to the policy committee, you're going to get a policy. So I would start at the broader sense of like, do we want a policy? Do we need to just the process? Do we need any of this? before we get to the policy committee. So I'm happy to take it. Like, I think we would be happy to take it, but I, I'd like to see sort of a broader think about this before it gets handed to policy. Cause we can always craft something and Sarah's right, we're, we're moving right along. Um, so we can always craft something. So I'd rather like decide on, do we even want to craft something first before we send it to the policy committee? So I think the idea of a committee that says, hey, let's look at what we've done. Let's look at this document. Let's figure something out and let's bring it back to the board and we'll, figure out what we want, and that may be to push it to policy, and then we'll have something for you quickly. So that would be my take. I, I would, I mean, I would agree. I think we, I think it's a good idea, um, mostly because we may have a, I don't want to use the word policy because that's, it's not a policy, but we may have a framework, but it, it's not necessarily been working that well. Um, because with the other two, the other schools, I don't know about Mount Vernon, but I know with, with the other two, there's the ways and means and there's advisory finance and there's a really detailed look. My sense with the SAU one was that that was very cursory, if at all, by that separate committee. And then it comes in and it's done. And, and I think that's what we're looking at. Like, how do we, how do we, recruit those people and get people who are actually going to be involved in looking at it so that we can get that you know second set of eyes and that feedback and that involvement and it may not be a change it may be a just how do we bolster the current system even um but i i think that's a good idea and i'm yeah i agree yep any other uh, comments seeing none all right let's go ahead and call the vote to form the committee all in favor please raise your hand Great, that's uh, unanimous today. Um, all right, let's pick the members. Who would like to volunteer from Amherst? Are you looking for two or just one from? Uh, I think we could probably get one. I, I don't think we necessarily need two. I think the superintendent search is a little bit more time consuming. Um, well, actually, I don't want to take that. Let me rewind that comment. I think both are very time consuming. 
Um, the superintendent uh, issue is more immediate. That's, that's what I was trying to refer to. Yeah. So we do have a budgetary process that starts really at the end of August, we have to recruit members of the public based on our current process. So sooner the better from a result standpoint. So if we can take one person from each board, I think that is a good starting point and the report back in at our meeting in June. I can do it from Amber. Yep. As long as it's not daytime, it has to be daytime. But I can do it, so. This also could be by Zoom, and Amy would be um, representing it. I'm used to night meetings. Are you sure? Even, even late after noon, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's 11 a.m. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've got Tom from uh, Amherst, Malvern. I'm looking at you, George. George? Yeah, no, I'm trying to dump. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, as long as their ability to access yep. through Zoom, because yep. obviously daytime is being extremely difficult for me. So, yeah, Convenience. I'll, I'll be happy to Great. put my two cents in. Awesome. And then, so he can? Ms. Grunt? Awesome. And um, uh, Christine would like to be part of the the meeting as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Yep. Yeah, no, no issues whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Um, uh, we are up to public comment two of two. Thank you, members of the public. We're good to go. <laughs> uh, and we do not have a non-public tonight. So uh, we are, are good to go. So uh, 30 minutes over, I apologize. Uh, but uh, motion to adjourn. Oh, You're over Mr. Under. Torres, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. All right. All right. Yes. 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 You wish that there was a document in here.